Welcome to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. Our show today is Conversation with Cousins from a Christian Perspective, featuring Eddie J. and Sherry T., your host. Welcome to this episode of Conversation with Cousins. We hope you are encouraged, inspired by the words that we share with you today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So glad that you have joined us, Conversation with Cousins. That means we're having a conversation between myself and my cousin who is sitting on the other side of me this morning. It is our 23rd episode, so we are glad once again that you have chosen to spend a moment or two with us in the presence of an almighty God. Without further ado, my name is Sherry and my cousin's name is? My name is Eddie J. And again, we are thankful for you all again tuning in with us again. As my cousin just said, uh, this is episode 23. Yeah, we've been doing this for 23 weeks straight. Uh, So we're not new to this. We're true to this now. Uh, So again, we are grateful for uh, you all uh, who continue to tune in, watch, or listen to us weekly. Uh, So again, we are uh, grateful to you all uh, because if you weren't listening to it, uh, then it wouldn't be going out. So again, you're listening to it. you're, You're spreading it. You're sharing it. Again, I want to continue to ask you to continue to share. Uh, we're trying to get our numbers up, uh, our subscribers up on our YouTube page. Uh, so again, I want to ask that you continue to hit that share button, uh, share this to your pages. And because this is YouTube, you can text it to people. You can put it on Twitter, uh, any other social media platform, because we're on YouTube, you can share it. So again, I'm just asking you to help us yes. uh, get the word out. Uh, so again, uh, we have been in this series uh, entitled Boundaries. And on last week, we started dealing with uh, financial and um, material possessions and how many people are bound uh, by uh, having to get stuff. Uh, we talked about on the intro of last week uh, where there's 500 scriptures dealing with prayer. Uh, there's 500 scriptures dealing with faith, uh, but there's over 2,300 scriptures dealing with money and possessions. And I said on last week, and I'll say it again, I truly believe that uh, the reason why so many scriptures is dealing with it, because the Lord knew that money and possessions would be one of our struggles. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he knew that would that would be one of our struggles. Uh, so again, uh, uh, so I believe it is very intentional uh, that in the Word of God we have so many scriptures uh, dealing with it. Uh, again, on last week I shared uh, that Jesus spoke in parables, mm-hmm. and uh, and again, and one third of the parables I shared with you, uh, he dealt with money or uh, possessions. Uh, so this week we're looking at one of those parables this week Mm -hmm. Uh, so this week we're looking at one of those parables uh, that Jesus uh, talked about dealing with uh, um, uh, finding money and uh, material possessions so this week we are in Luke chapter 12 Mm -hmm. this week we are in Luke chapter 12 and we will cover uh, verses 13 to 21 Uh, so again as y'all know uh, 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 this is a conversation with cousins from a Christian perspective. Yes, uh, yes. If it's going to be a Christian perspective, we have to put some word on it. Yeah. Y'all already know. Uh, if we just talk what we wanted to talk without the word, then it wouldn't be coming from the Christian perspective. Uh, so again, we're going to always put some word on whatever we talk about. 
uh, we're going to always put some word on it uh, so that, uh, again, I can speak for myself and my cousin Sherry. Uh, we want God to be glorified in our lives. Amen. Yeah, we want him to be glorified in our lives. Uh, so, again, uh, uh, so we're going to always, uh, there's not going to be an episode that you tune in on uh, that we're going to, we're not going to reference of the word of God. Amen. So again, we're in Luke chapter 12, uh, verses 13 to 21, but I'm going to read verses uh, 13 to 15. Uh, I'll expound on it a little bit. And as y'all know, uh, me and my cuz, we feed off of one another. Uh, so we'll be going back and forth as we've been doing these last uh, 22 weeks. Uh, yeah. So again, I want to read it today from the Christian Standard Version of the Bible. Uh, verses 13 to 15, uh, and it simply says this, uh, someone from the crowd said to him, teacher, tell me, my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Friend, this is Jesus, he said to him, who appointed me a judge or arbiter over you? He then told them, watch out and be on guard against all greed because one life is not in the abundance of possessions. Mm -hmm. So again, when we look at this particular uh, opening of scriptures that we're looking at today, uh, the, I'll say this, uh, the more things change, the more things stay the same. I'm just, I'm, I'm coming right off the bat, cuz. I'm coming yeah. right off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the more things change, uh, the more things stay the same. Greed, covetedness, the desire to be rich, mm -hmm. such craving transcends time and culture. If they were craving that way back in Jesus' day, mm -hmm. and they're still craving it in 2023. Mm -hmm. So again, greed, covetous, a desire to be rich, uh, transcends time and culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and here we see uh, Jesus was confronted by a man mm -hmm. who wanted his brother to divide the inheritance with him. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus responded and answered, who appointed me a judge or arbiter over you? Uh, Jesus was on a spiritual mission. And Jesus had just finished talking about the Holy Spirit, if you read a couple of verses up ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, so he had just finished talking about the Holy Spirit and was talking about the eternal and heavenly matters. Mm -hmm. But this man wanted to distract Jesus with mm -hmm. temporal and earthly matters. Mm -hmm. This man missed it. Jesus talking about heavenly matters, and now he wanted to bring bring things back to earthly matters. Mm -hmm. so, so, so Jesus, being Jesus, uh, uh, he used this as an opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to teach the crowd about material strongholds yeah. in a person's lives. Oh. Uh, so again, he Jesus, uh, he Jesus could have said, I'm talking about spiritual matters that could have could have brushed them off. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was always looking for a teaching opportunity. Yes. Let me pause and say this. Uh, we sh as believers should always be looking for a teaching opportunity yes. uh, when we are engaged with other believers as well or as when we are engaged with unbelievers yes. we should be looking for a teaching moment mm -hmm. uh, so he used this Jesus used this a moment uh, to uh, deal with the strongholds of money and possessions and people lives mm -hmm. and he said watch out be on guard guard against all greed. Mm -hmm. Let me say this, because greed comes in all shapes and sizes. Ooh, you're hitting the, you're hitting the whole run. 
Greed comes in all shapes and sizes. Uh, uh, it appeals to people from all walks of life, uh -huh. regardless of income or social status. Uh -huh. uh, no one is immune to the attacks of covetedness. Yes. And it is when the material takes the priority over the spiritual. Uh -huh. Let me say that again. Covetedness is basically when the material takes the priority over the spirit, spiritual. And the man, hear me now, the man who spoke in, in, in verse 13 was as greedy as his brother whom he complained about. Therefore, we must have our defenses up at all times yes. uh, because one's life is not uh, in the abundance of what we have. Yes. Uh, what you possess has nothing to do about what life is. Mm. Life is not about stuff. Mm. Let me say it again. Life is not about stuff. And a lot of people get caught up, and we hit it on it on last week as well, they get caught up on stuff. Yes. I got to accumulate this. I got to accumulate that. I got to get a new home. I got to get a new house. I got to get new clothes. Uh, I got to get the bling bling and all the gadgets and the gadgets. Yes. We get caught up in the stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to let you know life is not about stuff. Go ahead, cuz. Wow. Well, hey, cuz, look, you, I almost think you can talk this whole show because you came out. You came out of the gate setting it straight. Setting it straight, picking this parable up, and 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 going back to those that that simple thing: the more things change, the more things stay the same. And understanding that Jesus took the time because Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit. He was wait, matter of fact, he was just sharing the things of the kingdom of heaven when he was talking about the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit was going to be doing. And here a distraction comes. How many times do we get distracted in our lives when mm -hmm. we're trying to be on a spiritual plane and all of a sudden we get we get blind blindsided with a distraction that brings us back into the natural? And and Jesus said, and, and most of the times, I'm talking about myself, we may not catch it, but Jesus caught it and he made this moment teachable where he yeah. begins to explain to this man. And what this tells me is that Jesus cared so much about his soul, the seeds that were in him, that he began to, let's begin to unfold what is going on. So you can understand what I said before we got to this point, before you decided to interrupt. Jesus is, is going to reverse this thing to get him to understand what, what you're talking about is, is almost it is is almost contradictory what I was saying, but because I love you so much, I'm going to make you understand what's happening right now in this place to what that he might be delivered of his strongholds. I believe Jesus is setting this guy up. I'm, I, I want everybody to be free. I don't want you, I want you to put me first and understand that when I am put first. These distractions cannot stay. These strongholds have to be loose from their assignment to keep you busy in stuff that's not even about life. Like you just said, what is life? Life, life isn't in the abundance of things. Life is, in, life is in the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, knowing that he has given us life eternal. That's how important it is for us as believers when we are engaged in conversations that are probably going left most of the time, all right, to be able to reel it back in and say, hey, you know what the Bible says about this situation? That people won't get lost in their distractions, keeping what we do a teachable moment. And the only way we can do that, and we say it week in and week out, cuz, study the word. Mm. Because Jesus is going to set you up with some divine appointments throughout your day. 
where you have the right to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, to bring somebody from a natural perspective back into a spiritual perspective of, of understanding why we are here and what life consists of. There's no better place that you can start when you understand that the material should not override the spiritual, but the spiritual should override the material. And in that, God begins to add all things unto you because you put it in the right perspective. Back to you, Cass. So when we allow the material to take the priority over the spiritual, uh, that is idolatry. Ooh. You're hitting another home run. Uh, when we, when whatever we put before God, is our idol. Mm -hmm. And once we put uh, the possession of things over spiritual matters, uh, then uh, we're putting that ahead of God. Mm -hmm. uh, and anything we put ahead of God uh, is idolatry. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to be careful in this thing uh, that we keep things in its right perspective uh, because it it we can get so consumed uh in in and and trying to get mm -hmm. and what we need to get more than anything is the spiritual matters of God. Amen. Amen. And a lot of times many people like we talked about, we testified, both of us testified on last week. We have been down that road where we have allowed the things of this earth, this world, to distract us from mm -hmm. the things, uh, the spiritual matter. Yes. Uh, so it's important uh, to remember anything we put before God is our idol. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about, I think I was said it last week, uh, the God that we serve is a jealous God. Yes, yes. Uh, and because he's a jealous guy, he wants to be first. And if we decline to put him first, we might as well just go on and do live our life the way, way we want to live it. Because mm -hmm. he wants to be uh, the first priority in our lives. Yes. Uh, so it's important that 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 we do that. Yes. Uh, so then he he goes on now and gets into this parable. Uh, he gets into this parable. Um, uh, we're going to read a verse 16, uh, Luke 16. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the 21, but then we'll just walk it. Uh, so he says this. Uh, then he told them a parable. A rich man's land was very productive. He thought to himself, why should I do what should I do since I don't have anywhere to store my crops? I will do this, he said. I'll build down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grains and my goods there. Then I'll say to myself, you have many goods stored up for many years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. Verse 20 and 21, but God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is demanded of you and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? Mm -hmm. That's how it is when the ones who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Mm -hmm. but now, in 16 and 19, he Jesus uses this illustration mm -hmm. uh, and he uses this uh, illustration of a rich man uh, who has a great crop. Mm -hmm. uh, but here uh, he says, having nowhere to store in his harvest, he tore down his barns mm -hmm. and built bigger ones. Mm -hmm. And then once he solved that problem, uh, he decided, I'm just going to kick back, take it easy, mm -hmm. eat, drink, and, and enjoy life. Right, right. At no point did he say, 
God has blessed me with an abundance, I have more than I need. Ooh. Let me this say that again. At, at, at not at one point did he say, God has blessed me with abundance more than I have need. Mm -hmm. uh, who can I who can I serve with what I have? Uh, there was no room in this man's life for anyone else. God doesn't bless you so you can build bigger, bigger storage spaces. Mm. He blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others. Amen. And if you look at that text, that man, uh, I, I, I forgot the count. But if you read that text, verses uh, uh, 16 and 19, he says, I, 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 so many times. Right, right. And he failed to forget uh, who blessed him with, it, with, with, with what he had. Wow. He was so caught on himself. Yeah. And he failed to recognize uh, the one who blessed him to get what he had. Wow. And instead of, so he became a hoarder. Uh, uh. He became a hoarder. Instead of saying, I've got this abundance left over, my barns are full. Uh -huh. What he should have said, I'm going to help those who are less fortunate Say it. than I am. Say it. That's what he should have said. Uh -huh. But he said, no, I'm going to tear down my, my barns and uh -huh. build some bigger barns and yes. store all this stuff in for myself. Wow. This man was selfish. Yes. And we talked about that on last week as well, being selfish. Uh -huh. And he missed the opportunity yeah. to be a blessing to someone else. The Believer for Life Christian clothing brand is now on Amazon.com forward slash Believe for Life. Hey, cuz, this is this, this is home run number two, three, four, and five. You kicked it off again, and and and, and, and you had me thinking on it. Because you know what, I'm just I'm just I'm just gonna start off that off with the three things that that he that he considered. He was prideful. He was a hoarder. And he was selfish. Mm. Here, here, here is here is a principle from the kingdom of heaven. When God created man and and humanity, it was all about that we would serve each other. So as God is uh, allowing you, because you said this guy said everything, but he didn't say, Lord, look how much you bless me to serve others. This is why Jesus comes back, and this this is why he's pronouncing this 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 principle. Of living, serving, serving each other is in what we do. Even when we have businesses, we're serving a community. And as God begins to grow that business, allows you to grow that business, don't forget where your blessings come from. Always stay in an attitude of serving those in your community, those around you. Because when you miss it, you begin to take on a, 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 a devil that's always going to and fro, snatching up things, the pride of life, being a hoarder and selfishness. Those are not characteristics of the God we serve. He put us here to, uh, as, and I'm going to use the word, as we acquire wealth, we're building. He never told us once to go into retirement. And that's what this guy did. I got all my stuff. Now I'm going to retire. He's, he, he never even had in his mind to serve that which he that which God has set before him, his community, or, or even his family. Because in that next verse, God says, you know, who are you leaving this to? So we have to remember that we're here no matter, no matter whether you're in business, employed, self-employed, however you want to put it, you are here to serve your community. And a matter of fact, even if you're an employee, you're still, it is still a business because you're there to serve your employee, to do the best job that he has so he can continue to pay you. Now, I'm, 
I'm 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 going down a whole nother trail because I'm thinking from a business perspective, this guy did not have business principles working on his behalf. Mm. Because he was greedy. He knew, he knew how to build a business. He knew how to how 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 to say, hey, I need to grow my business. But in that, he still didn't have what, what God has instilled in all of us to serve one another. Let me see how I can serve my community and best benefit those who are less fortunate. No matter how how you obtain it, you must always know that it is it is not about you at the end of the day. It is about those who you serve and how you serve. So yeah, he, he missed he missed the point. But we need to be able to see what his whole his was what, what his whole mindset was. So we do not um, get to this point because that becomes what? We do not want the pride of life. We do not want to be hoarders. We do not want to be greedy. And we do not want to be selfish. We want to be those that serve our community, our families in the attitude of love, grace, and mercy for those who don't have enough. When, 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 when the body of Christ puts everything together and comes together as, as one, unity, and, and it, should, it talks about it in Acts, they put, and no one will have need of anything. That's what the kingdom of heaven looks like. That's what the kingdom of heaven looks like. And, and that comes out of serving. That comes out of serve. Not, 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 not that we become slaves, but we become servants one to another. That is the heart of God because that's what that's what He created us for, not only to serve Him in 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 our in Him, but to serve each other. And we serve each other by not by understanding as you use it. We should get up every day, Lord. Who could not serve in my in the position that I am? No matter whether you're an employee or an employer, self-employed, no matter how you look at it, every day ought to be a life of who can I serve. Who can benefit from the blessings God has given me? No matter how, how, no matter how you equate it, no matter whether it's a ten dollar blessing or a million dollar blessing, how can you serve someone in that? And that, and for me, that's what I look at. So all those who want to retire, throw that word out of your uh, vocabulary because there is no retirement in Jesus Christ. Because as long as you're in the earth, you're here to serve, and you're here to serve your community. Back to you, Pastor. That's a good point. Uh, there's no retirement plan for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, our graduation day is when he calls us home mm -hmm. or if we're still here when he returns. Amen. Uh, that's our graduation day. Mm -hmm. uh, and until then, we are to be striving. Uh, we are to be working. Uh, to uh, advance uh, his kingdom. Uh, so here in, in verses 20 and 21, uh, uh, the question is, is what was God's assessment uh, of this man and this materialism? Uh, what was God's assessment of this man prioritizing uh, the physical over the spiritual? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jesus says, uh, you fool. Jesus said, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the God the God said, God said to him, you fool. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. So, so why was he a fool? Mm -hmm. uh, after all, he had invested well. Uh, his retirement was secure. Uh, the problem was that his life was about to be demanded of him. Mm. And the things he prepared would go to someone else. So in other words, the man saw gain. God saw loss. Mm. Yeah, good, good. The, 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 the man saw life. God saw death. Mm. And according to Jesus, this man uh, is what a person who stores 
up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Mm -hmm. The man's wealth is not the issue here. Uh, as cousin said, and I said again, it's that he hoarded it for himself mm -hmm. with no thought of God or the temporal nature of life. Mm -hmm. And though he was physically rich, he was spiritually bankrupt. Uh, he had everything except God, which means he had nothing. If you have everything without God, you have nothing. So in one night, all the man's accomplishments and plans were ruined. Mm. He made business plans and life plans, but hear me, but he could not control the day of his death. And all his accomplishments and plans were instantly nothing. Oh. He had planned to kick back in retirement, live it up, kick back, enjoy life, uh, take the cruises and all the trips. and all. He had it mapped out of what his life was going to be. But he failed to have the one secure thing in life. Mm -hmm. And that's a life with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And because he failed that, even though he had all this stuff, had accumulated all this wealth, because uh, he did not accept Christ, he never enjoyed it. And then because he didn't accept Christ, we know where he ended up at. Yes, yes. Go ahead, cuz. Look, he ended up in, a, in, in an eternal place he probably wish he didn't go. Let's just go. It's called hell. You are eternally separated from the one that created you, that blessed you, that loved you so much. He allowed you to make a choice that would lead to death. Now, I don't know about y'all, but if you're in that position, you might want to change your you might want to change your attitude today. You might want to hear, you might want to hear what the word is saying to all of us on a daily basis. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Because some of us can say, you know what? God is good. God has blessed me. And it's just mere words. Because it's in the things that you do daily that shows that God is with you. God is with you. And we have to understand when 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 God gets when we get to this point in scripture, this man was unbelieving and unwise. Like Cuz said, he did not have Jesus Christ. He did not have the kingdom of heaven in his thoughts. All he wanted to do was build bigger things, look good in front of the people, say, look, look what I have done. I can do something you can't do, can't do. I can go anywhere I want. I can buy anything I need. But at the end of the day, he forgot. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You can obtain it. But if you don't put God first, <clears throat> God gonna keep it. It is it wait, it is it is death already written with your with your name on it. Because it's a heart issue. This man was dealing with God was dealing with his heart. Let me ex, let me expose what's really in you. And God is still exposing the things that are not like him before us this morning. That we might come to a place of repentance. And say, God, if there's any selfishness in me, if I'm hoarding. If I'm thinking about building things all about me, 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 like I kind of said, I was listed so many times. This guy, she was like, there's just too many eyes to even worry about. If you all about me, if it's a what about me and not about others, just go, you know, look, look, altar call is ready. I know my cousin going to come back and give one. But allow the Holy Spirit to, to take that away from you.
release you of the strongholds because that's what that is. Because at the end of the day, it's all about Jesus Christ and life. And we don't know when God will say, today is the day that I require your soul. But if you put God first and have him, have him in your heart, everything you do, everything God has assigned you to, you do it for his glory. Eternal life is yours. And not only is eternal life yours, but the blessings that make you rich in the earth belong to you. Because God already knows you know how to handle it. A lot of us can't receive those the, the magnitude of those blessings. Because if we do, we will lose our soul. And God said, no, your soul is too important to so don't store it up so someone else can uh, take it and, and know how to use it. Store it up that you might serve the uh, uh, your community. You might serve them in the joy of the Lord. And teach them those principles that God has set in your heart. That that, that, that principle will continue to, to, to add to whatever you do. That's a real legacy. What legacy are you leaving for those that the, for, for those that, that that remain in the earth? What legacy as you're building, whatever you're, you're building, whatever you do, what legacy are you really are, are you leaving them a legacy of life and understanding what the principles God has set before us? Or are you just saying, hey, you you get yours because I got mine? And at the end of the day, you still can't enjoy it. Because you're in a place you don't want to be. Down there with the devil and his angels. Don't do it. I'm just saying. Don't do it. Back to you guys. Go ahead and wrap this up. Yeah, so. Uh, scripture says. Uh, what good will it be for someone to gain the world? Yet lose or forfeit their soul. Okay. You can get all the stuff you want to, but if you do not have a relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's all for naught. Uh, if you go ahead and read uh, the uh, the rest of this chapter, it goes back to what we ended with, uh, with on last week. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. We ain't got to worry about stuff. Seek ye first the kingdom, and everything will be added unto you. Uh, so again, what's the point of having all this stuff? And then the Lord says, okay, today your soul uh, will be required. I mean, that's something. This man had retirement plans <laughs> the Lord. And he Because God called his number. Yeah. Don't be like this man. Mm. Uh, map out all this stuff. With all about himself. And God had no place in his life. Mm. Don't, 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 don't be like uh, this man. Mm. Uh, we 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 showed to you in episode twenty three a perfect a perfect example of what not to be like. Mm. Uh, again, ain't nothing wrong with material stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with uh, wealth and money. Uh, we are we need it in life. Mm. Uh, but the key thing is how you prioritize it. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that how we it, how we prioritize it is the difference. Will we allow it to control us in our every move? Mm -hmm. Again, I said anything we put before God, that's an idol. Yes. Uh, so we have to uh, again make it up in our mind that God is going to be the center and number one in our lives. We have to make that up in our mind. We have to decree and declare 
Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, God has to be number one. Uh, so again, there may be somebody who's watching us uh, or listening to us. Uh, it may be it may be morning, noon, and noon or night. Whenever you hear this or listen to this, uh, but you need to know uh, that you can make it. You can't make it in this life without Christ. Uh, so you need to basically say, "I, I need you, God." Uh, I'm humbly calling out to you. Uh, uh, I'm tired of, of doing things uh, my way. Uh, help help me to start doing things your way. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, you need to invite him into your life right now. Uh, you need him to fill the emptiness in you uh, with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will make you whole. Amen. Uh, you need to say, Lord, help me to trust you. Lord, help me to love you. Uh, help me to live my life for you. Help me to understand your grace, your peace, and your mercy. If you're willing to do that for the first time, uh, welcome to the body of Christ. Amen. So there's somebody who's watching who have made that step and for whatever reason you walked away or you know you're not living according to how you are supposed to be living. I want to call out to you, cry out to you. Come on back into the fold. Amen. Uh, you, 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 whatever, the, whatever made you go back out there trying to do it on your own, you know it don't work. You know it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know you need to come on back into the fold. So, 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 come on back into the fold again before it's too late. Mm -hmm. And to the, those who have an established relationship with the Lord, uh, I want to admonish you to hold on to the bloodstained banner. Amen. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Uh, hang on in there. Continue to keep God as the center of your life. And as the scripture says in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Uh, so again, that's my encouragement. That's my plea. That's my cousin and I prayer. Yeah. That those of you who don't know Christ will get to know Christ. Those of you who know Christ and walked away, come on back. And those of you who still in, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. That's our plea. That's our prayer. So, Lord, we thank you for all of those who are watching and listening. Uh, we pray, God as they have heard our cry and our plea, uh, they would take heed where, wherever they stand at in life and make the decision uh, to follow you and keep and make you first. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We pray you have enjoyed our conversation today. Thanks for spending time with us. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. Partner with us. Like, subscribe, support. Visit our website, livingbiblehub.com. Until next time, peace, love, and blessing.